Hey guys, let's talk about virtual machine hypervisors versus containers. What are these things? Why would you care as a professional web designer or developer? And this is just a high level overview of what's going on here. So a virtual machine is basically just a piece of software that uh, allows you to install other software inside of it so you can control it virtually as opposed to installing the software directly on your computer. Uh, I'll explain this in non-nerd. So let's say you got a Windows system, but it works on Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. Let's say you got a Windows system and you're a developer and you got a company who still uses Windows XP and Internet Explorer. Now, you want to be able to test your software in Windows XP. So you have a couple options. You can install Windows XP on your computer, which would be a disaster, or you could use a virtual machine software like VMware and you can install XP into, inside this software and then you can run XP on your computer as you're running your Windows 10 computer, for example. So what does that mean? Think of it this way. So you install the virtual machine software. It's like an app, it's like a piece of software. It's a program that you install. You install it. And with, what this will do, this software will do, it will allow you to create these isolated buckets, if you will. Think of those buckets, where you can install software into these buckets. Now, there's different ways of doing this. A full virtual machine allows you to install entire operating systems. So you can have a Windows 10 machine, you can install XP, you can install Linux, you can install Windows 95. I don't know if you do that today, but anyway. So that's the way that is set up. And why would you want to do that? So that you can have a precisely configured operating system for testing and development. Developers use virtual machines all the time. Now, I was using them woo, 10 years ago. I used VMware Workstation on Windows so that I could do precisely that. I, would have, I think I had Windows 7 at the time. And I would use virtual machines for two things. A, for development so that I can install Windows XP, Windows 95, or I would install different versions of XP or maybe different versions of Windows 7 where I can test out different things very quickly, easily, and isolated. What the virtual machine software does, by the way, it basically tricks the operating system that you install inside of it thinking that it's being installed directly on the computer itself. And the virtual machine software basically creates a connection between the installed operating system inside the virtual machine with the real base computer. So it allocates resources like CPU and disk space and uh, RAM, etc. It handles all of that. It's really very, very powerful stuff. So you do that to A, to have custom installation, installations of operating systems for development purposes, etc. But it's also a great way for protection so Windows 7 wasn't exactly the most secure. So what I would do is I would install different versions of Windows 7 inside of different virtual machines, and I'd have one specifically for surfing the web. Because if I would get a virus in that virtual machine, that version of Windows 7 inside a virtual machine, it didn't infect the whole computer. So it was really cool that way because I didn't care about whether that virtualized version of Windows 7 got infected because it was in this sandbox, it was in this bucket that protected the base operating system underneath it. So that's a very, very, very cool thing. Now, another feature of a lot of these virtual machines, you can create, just by clicking a button, you can create a snapshot in time of your operating system. And you create multiples, if you will. So let's imagine this. You got this virtual machine with Windows 7, another one, Windows 95 installed. So you click a button, you launch Windows 7, right? It's basically, it's like launching an app. It's launching Photoshop. It's like well, launching Word or something. Boom, you got, ver you got another ver version. You got Windows 7 running. Now in there, I can just go click Create Snapshot, and it basically creates a snapshot, a picture of how Windows 7 is configured, what apps are installed, what its history is at that moment in time. And I can create multiples. So I can say on September 1st, I have this installed, Windows 7 clean, never surf the web, super clean. And then I, I create a clone of that. I have another version of Virtual 7 based on this clone. 
so that I can then surf the web with that. So let's say I'm surfing a web with that and I search for pictures of fat George Lucas. I click on it, boom, I get a virus and it corrupts this install this version of, of uh, Windows 7, this snapshot. So if I had done this on my root computer, if I had been serving, surfing the web on my root computer, the virus would be on the main computer, which is like a huge headache. But because it's in the virtual machine, it's in that virtual machine. So how do I get rid of it? I just delete that installation and I roll back to the version, the previous version, the clean install where I never surfed the web. So it's, it's safe. It's no problem. So it's literally, instead of having a huge problem with viruses and stuff, you just go, boom, delete, boom, you got your old version back, super clean, never, like nothing ever happened. Clone it again, boom, there you go. It's off, off on the web, no problems, no viruses. So that's how I used to use my virtual machines. That was the other reason. It was just for keeping my base root operating system clean. And in fact, when I use VMware Workstation on Windows, I would never install apps on the root of the uh, Windows, except for the virtual machine, except for VMware. Why? Because with Windows, you don't get it with Mac, but with Windows, you would get these conflicts between one app was installed and it would cause another app to have problems. So there's another reason to use virtual machines. You can have one virtual machine set up to run a particular piece of software, and you have another virtual machine that runs another piece of software. It's really pretty cool stuff. So that's a virtual machine. Now you have something called a container. Now a container is a virtualized version of a bunch of software, but it's not the whole operating system. You'll see it in sophisticated hosting, cloud hosting, will give you containers where you can install your web server, your database, and all the data associated with the web server and the database and your app. And it's in a virtualized container itself but it shares an operating system with other containers that have other apps. Again, this is a very popular out there. There's a product called Docker that this does this kind of thing. And there's all kinds of advantages in terms of development that way, in terms where you can configure a container to have this version of uh, Nginx, or this version of Apache, this version of uh, Python, or this version of PHP, or et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea, this database. Boom, so you have it all configured perfectly, and then you develop off of this container. You write all your code, you develop the app, and then when you deploy it, you deploy it, you know it's gonna be, it's the same, it's the same exact installation. There's no configuration issues. Now, if this is over your head because you're a new developer, let me just point out that one of the biggest problems in development in the past is that you would be developing, writing your code on your computer with, uh, you know, your version of Apache or your version of Nginx or whatever. And then when you go to deploy your code to the live server, the live server settings were a little bit different. It could be like one or two little settings. It will cause your app not to work. With containers, you just go, you just upload it. And Bob's your uncle, your app is running really nicely. Now, should everybody who's doing web design development should run to using containers and virtual machines? No. Uh, this these tools, although super powerful, important, become much more important as a project becomes bigger, as they scale more. So it depends on the use case. If you're doing a simple website, you can just use traditional hosting, which is, uh, you know, that you get uh, on, you know, so many hosting companies out there. But as you become more sophisticated in terms of the type of code that you're writing or the websites that you're building, the web apps that you're building, these type of containers or virtual machines become super important. Now, I am of the belief for most development, I think that you should be using hosting companies that provide these services relatively turnkey. So you don't have to worry about managing containers. You don't have to worry about managing virtual machines. Uh, it's a general rule I find in the development community, community, the programmer community, they like to uh, plan for the next Facebook, even though they're not building the next Facebook, right? You don't need an 18 wheel or truck to move two chairs. You just need a small minivan. So there are a lot of cool tools out there like containers, like companies like Docker and stuff, where their use comes into play, where it becomes important to know this stuff when and only when 
your app is at that level. Otherwise, you're over-engineering, you're adding a lot of extra cost and headaches for nothing. But that's another story. So now you have a general idea what the virtual machines are. You have hypervisors where you have your uh, entire operating system installed as this piece of software, as I explained. Or you can have containers where you're installing just some particular programs that uh, very useful tools for, uh, for developers. And there you have it. This was like the third try at this video and uh, then it got lost in the mix.